American female ranking member of the House Committee of Science, Space, and Technology. Ranking member Johnson has a strong passion for improving STEM education, especially for populations currently underrepresented in STEM, and has sponsored and co-sponsored many bills uh, throughout her tenure. So please join me in uh, welcoming House Science, Space, and Technology Committee ranking member, Eddie Bernice Johnson. Thank you very, very much, and let me uh, say good afternoon. <laughs> I'm delighted that you're having this meeting, and most especially delighted to get an invitation to make two remarks. And I'd like to thank the uh, National Science Foundation, Discovery Magazine, and ASME for sponsoring today's event, for being leaders in this area. It is such an important area that no single person can possibly do it. It takes a room full of people like we have now to get the word out and certainly um, to be able to get the process put together. Um, I want to welcome to all of the distinguished panelists and to our moderator, Dr. Herman Mundy, who is the National Science Foundation's education director, whom I work with closely being the ranking member of the Science, Space, and Technology Committee. Sometimes I almost hate to see some of the people come in for abuse, but we get through it. <laughs> uh, all of us know we must increase our numbers of our young people going into the STEM courses. And um, I hate to tell you this because it really tells my age, which I, I like to tell you when I'm finished. But I first passed legislation in 1974 when I was in the Texas House, uh, trying to make sure that women and minorities were not ignored. It's almost like the Gathering Stone Report. We heard it, we didn't do much, and now the storm is here. And that's kind of what we did when we started talking about STEM education and being more inclusive. We heard it, we did a little, not nearly enough. And now, we don't need to just do it because it's the right thing, a popular thing. We must do it now because it's an essential thing uh, that we include all of the minds we have available. Uh, we'll be asking ourselves, how did we get here with half the brain power? We won't be that lucky in the future. We've been quite fortunate in the past to really make great advances with only using 50% of our brain power. We need all of our brain power now, and so it's up to us to make sure that young people get the message of how important it is to major in STEM courses. And it's not because it's popular, and not just because it pays well, it's because we need the talent to make sure that we continue to make the next level so that we can stay competitive as a nation. We are no longer competing from state to state or city to city. We are competing globally, and we must be ready. And we don't appear that we know that because we are not advancing too well. We have some excellent schools here and there. I wish we could take one of the schools I have in my district, which is uh, for the last 10 or 12 years has been ranked as the best public schools in the nation. But that's only about 20% of the kids in the school district. And we're finding that. We're grateful wherever we find those special schools. We're also grateful to have the public-private uh, partnerships and making sure that they come up to the standards that we have. But we've got to do more. We've got to be more inclusive. There's a former colleague. <laughs> you got the all star. And it's good to see you. Good to see you. And, and so we do have an obligation to think about our young people to make get them interested and keep them focused. And we know that that has to come starting K through 12 with good and better qualified teachers in most of where we have now. We have we have good teachers that have come along and educated <coughs> some years ago that might not be quite up to date. 
we need to make sure that those teachers have access to the opportunity of catching up and if not being replaced because we can't afford to continue to have classes where kids lose attention and just not getting very much. We just cannot afford it today. And in my hometown, we are going through a big crisis because we have a new superintendent who is trying to make those changes. And I thought the man was going to be tarred and fell and sent out of town because he was firing some teachers and principals. But he had told them a year ago, had given instructions of how to come up to par. And, the, and he said that if it doesn't happen, we've got to make a change. This is for the students. I don't even know who these teachers are. And if I do know them, I feel sorry for them, but they are in the wrong place in the classroom if they're not ready to be. And that's a challenge that's going on all over the country. And somehow we've got to get through it. And we've got to make sure that we support this good change so that our students can have the best that we have to offer so that they can be ready when they go to college. Now, all of us know that kids get very, very interested in something third, fourth, fifth grade. But if they don't keep focused, they'll lose it going into those years when they begin to look at the opposite sex and get interested, you know, the interest kind of broad. <laughs> so we've got to make sure that it continues to be interesting for them and make sure they're focused and don't leave any child behind. Make sure that every child in that class is getting attention so that we don't lose them because it's child detriment to lose them. If we lose young people now from the education system, it doesn't speak well for our future because we'll have food stamps and prisons to take care of the rest of our babies. We're trying to work away from that. You've probably read the book, Working to Yes. We're trying to work to yes, uh, making sure we don't need the kind of food stamps or the kind of incarceration facilities that we have now. And if we make sure that every young person gets a good quality education, most especially rooted in some of the STEM courses, that will not happen. Now, wouldn't that be a glorious day when we can, and we can get there. We can get there because we see improvements where we have better resources. We have better teachers, better resources available to stimulate the minds of young people. We see the improvements, so we know it's possible. It is really possible with the resources. I've seen it happen right in my hometown. I've seen the Head Start program go from mediocre to one of the best in the country when the private sector came in and added more money, reduced the ratios of teacher and student, and brought in a lot of volunteers. Kids in public housing, single heads of households, all colors started to achieve on testing higher than the most expensive school district, the richest school district in the country, which is Highland Park. So I know it can be done with the resources, and the resources consist of good teachers who are willing to get out of their box and engage every child and make sure that nobody's lost in their classroom. We might even have to get away from lining these desks up, make some circles, or make some fours or whatever, but do something to make sure that every child is engaged and we'll see a difference. I thank you for what you do. I appreciate everything that you do to help us get to where we're trying to go. Thank you.